Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. If you can take your seats, um, a very warm welcome to the Merchant Adventures Hall, especially if you've not been here before. If you haven't been here before, I want to know why. Um, but uh, a very warm welcome. If I could now introduce uh, Delma Tomlin, the Governor of the Merchant Adventures, uh, who will introduce our speaker. Good morning everybody and thank you. It's fantastic to see such a good crowd here and it reminds us all that this is what we used to do about three years ago and it's been an absolute treat to be back together uh, in company, networking uh, and uh, enjoying breakfast at the same time. It's my very pleasant duty uh, to introduce Judith Bermicker and to tell you something very, very briefly about the company and this new partnership that we've set up with the University of York Enterprise Works. Our forefathers built this hall uh, in, in 1357. Over the past 665 years, members have worked together to support one another in trade and commerce, and we continue to gather today as a membership organisation, supporting each other whilst offering a broad education programme, focusing primarily on enterprise and business skills. Today marks the beginning of a new partnership with the university to share knowledge and expertise of our members with the broader public and with our student population. And we're delighted to see you. Judith is a senior businesswoman in the city, leading the National Railway Museum, an organisation which is a significant contributor to the economy and cultural health of York. Judith joined the Science Museum Group in 2005, starting off as head of commercial development moving through various management roles before being made director of the NLRM in 2017. Throughout her career, she has garnered capital investment, increased profits, and led on challenges in culture and approach to professionalise her team and engage with the public. Judith joined the Merchant Adventurous Company in April 2020, and as we emerged from this period of isolation and ourselves venture into the wider world, we're delighted to be able to welcome her to launch our new series of business breakfasts. We're all invested in the museum and its future development, so it gives me great pleasure, Judith, to invite you to the stage. Thank you. Well, thank you for that lovely introduction. Uh, welcome, everyone. Um, I th there's lots of faces around the room that, that I know, uh, but if you don't know me, as Demma says, I'm the uh, museum director at the National Railway Museum, but I'm also responsible for Locomotion, which is another museum that we have up in County Durham. Um, and to give just a tiny bit of background, pre-COVID, we were getting about 800,000 visitors a year to uh, the museum at York and about 200,000 to the museum in Shildon. Um, and we're looking to, for that to grow across both of them to about 1.4 million. So I'm going to give you a, a bit of a, a, a whistle stop, starting off with York Central. I am not a York Central expert. I do sit on the, uh, the board for York Central, but I'm, I'm not an expert for it. I suggest we get somebody back at a later date to talk in more detail about York Central. But I'll give a little intro of that and then a little bit about um, the museum and our plans. Uh, this gives you an idea, a sort of artist's impression, and it is an artist's impression because we don't have trains that look like that in this country at the moment, um, but that gives an idea of a, a, the sense of feel of, of what York Central could look like. At the moment, as you know, if you arrive at the back of um, the train station, what you have is, is a sort of desolate wasteland and then the museum in the, in the distance. Um, there has been some work done to that to improve it already as part of the sort of early enabling works for York Central. But the idea being, as that evolves, is that we're moving into a world of uh, lovely civic spaces and public realm space with then the museum at the, the sort of doorstep to York Central and then commercial environments um, around us. Um, I thought it'd be helpful just to touch on, it, you obviously can't see that in detail, but it gives you an idea. So for those people who've been in York a long time, York Central has been talked about for about 40 years. Probably longer, actually. There are some records that go back even further. There was, a, there was a, a, an article one of my curators found from the newspaper in 1864 that said the Lehman Road area of York uh, needed investment because it was an area for ladies of the night. So it had been talked about since then that needed to develop. 
Why it's happened now, how it's managed to move forward finally, is the land ownership. So this, this slide just gives you an idea. The blue is the area of land that's owned by Network Rail. Uh, so obviously public ownership through Network Rail. The pink is the ownership by Homes England. So we sold uh, part of our, uh, the museum land, which we didn't use, um, to Homes England. And they also bought other private sector owned land in the, uh, the mix. Then the purple is the museum. Um, the, there's a little bit of green there. That's the uh, council. That's the land that the council owns. And then obviously you've got the station as well. So the reason this could finally come forward was that it was all in public sector ownership, which meant that one of the biggest challenges for anybody here who's been involved in developments um, is the infrastructure, building the roads and all the exciting things like that is one of the most expensive things to do and you don't make any money back from it. Having it in public ownership meant that it could be government funding. So there's about £155 million worth of infrastructure being built on York Central to enable it to come forward. Um, that's sort of what it looks like today. Uh, not quite, because some parts of it have already been demolished, but that gives you an idea. You can see, really see from that the teardrop. So it's called the teardrop development. That's quite... A, a usual design for city centres with railways in the city centre where you've got you know, your main line and avoiding line so that the, the one going up that side is the, the freight avoiding line so it doesn't have to go through the station and then landlocked in the middle. So that's quite a normal teardrop start. King's Cross looked like this 20, 20 years ago. Um, so that gives an idea of what the site looked like. This gives, again, an idea um, of the outline planning that's been granted for York Central. So towards the, the, um, uh, this side of, it, of the site um, is the commercial area. Um, you've got the museum next to that. So you've got the commercial area next to the station. You've got the museum. And then as you work back through up into the teardrop is the, is the residential area for it. Just to give a, a, a real quick snapshot of some numbers around it, as I talked about for the museum, so at, at the NRM we're looking to increase to 1.2 million, up at Shildon to seven, oh, sorry, 250,000. Um, one of the really important things for us is to really increase the number of school children that come to the uh, National Railway Museum. We're looking at getting 70,000 school children a year to the museum as a result of the plans I'm about to show you. We get about 28,000 at the moment, so it's a, it's a real increase. But as you'll see, what we're doing is a real driver for school children to be coming through. And the thing we want to get them excited about is engineering um, and the future of the railways. Um, there's a few stats there around York Central. Um, uh, you know, things like 6,500 um, high-quality jobs. It's probably one of the worst-kept secrets in government and in York, which is this idea of the government property agency um, looking to move on to uh, York Central. That is still an evolving um, thing that's happening. We will expect to see planning to come forward for that in the next few months for it. And that's an opportunity to have up to 3,000 civil service jobs in York, which is, you know, quite, quite a huge thing for us to have. Um, as you can see, the, you know, the uh, 1.16 billion to the economy is quite a significant uh, number, uh, as well as 2,500 new homes on the development. So moving on from York Central to the museum, um, for, I'm going to do the classic thing and ask, how many people here have been to the National Railway Museum? Excellent. And if there's anyone without their hands up, I expect to see you very soon. But I think it was almost everybody had their hands up there. So you, you know at the moment we've got two main halls. We've got the Great Hall, which has got the big locomotives in it. And we've got Station Hall, which has got more of a station feel to it. Station Hall uh, with platforms and with carriages in it. Um, we are looking to, it, to work on almost every part of the site uh, most of it by 2025, which is why it's called Vision 2025. Um, uh, but some of the projects will fall into 26 and 27. I'm going to focus today on the ones that are in uh, that we will deliver by 2025. Uh, with the main one being Central Hall. So at the moment, um, the museum has Lehman Road that goes through the middle of it. As I'm sure you're aware, we've been through a stopping up order and various other things with a new road being built 
uh, that will replace Lehman Road and new cycle and pedestrian routes that will go in before Lehman Road gets stopped up. And at that point, we'll be looking to start work on Central Hall, um, which will be the opportunity to have something sort of between the two main halls. Um, so that's what it looks like at the moment. If you were coming um, from the uh, station side, that's... Uh, can you see over there? Am I right in your way? No? Okay, good. <laughs> um, uh, that's the, what you could see from the, the museum, and this is um, uh, all, all, pretty much all of what you can see, ex except for this here. Um, all, of, all of those buildings is the museum estate. All of that is ours. Is, um, we've got Great Hall, um, uh, Station Hall, what's called the Mineral Office at the front. It used to be called the Bullnose. All of that is the first thing you'll see as you come into York Station. That's to give you an idea, um, again, from the station side of it, with Central Hall superimposed in the middle of what that will begin to look like. What will be very different... Um, as we get to that point uh, for 2025, is rather than having a desolate wasteland in front of us between us and the station, will be two squares. There'll be Station Square on the station side, then the new Lehman Road, and then Museum Square on the other side of it. So it'll be far more an engaging way for people to come to the museum. So Central Hall... Um, we uh, received planning for that earlier this year. Thank you to Janet, who <laughs> certainly made that, helped make that happen. Um, this is the new building that will go between, uh, uh, between uh, Great Hall and Station Hall. It's an opportunity for us to really change how people engage with the museum as they arrive. At the moment, uh, the arrival is, is a little underwhelming, was how somebody described it very politely to me the other day. I would say it's just absolutely bloody awful for visitors. They have to, they have to fight their way through a car park, walk into a, basically a shop, um, and then try and work out from there where do they want to go. And one of the first things they'll do is be confronted with an underpass to get under the road to get to the other side. This is an opportunity for all of our visitors to arrive on uh, one level from the station. It, there'll be a new entrance to the station, which will be on the same level as well, one level all the way across the site, um, and be able to really uh, uh, arrive into a space where they can then decide how do they want to spend their day, what do they want to do. Um, I'll show some images of the inside of it at the moment. This is the other side of the return. This is what would be coming down Lehman Road, um, that where there is <coughs> excuse me, uh, an entrance into the uh, central hall at that point as well. Uh, and to the right, importantly, is it to the right? Yes, still to the right there. Um, importantly, is a gallery which will be called Futures Gallery, which is our opportunity to talk about the future of the railways. What is it that's happening today and over the next 10, 15, 20 years that will change how mass transit works across this country but also around the world? And what's the innovation and technology we're developing in this country that will be exported and used around the world? This gallery is the place where we'll do that. We're working with the rail industry, um, with uh, um, academic institutions to look at what are the themes that we could be talking about in that space. There's also an opportunity for young people to begin to understand what are the engineering opportunities in the railways going forward. Um, at the moment, we still, unfortunately, we run a lot of STEM um, events with families and with school groups. Unfortunately, we still have a challenge whereby both the teachers and the parents don't understand what engineering is. They don't understand the opportunities that the children could have. What we're looking to do with this is really engage with them as well as children, but really with the parents to help them understand what's the future opportunities, what's the great job opportunities that could happen um, in the railways. So that gallery, that will open in the first instance in 2025, but it will change every couple of years, because obviously the railways will keep changing and evolving. Um, and I think the other thing to say about it, importantly, is the museum, as you've all been, we're very good at having big rail vehicles in it, which are lovely and beautiful, but that's only such a small part of the railways. You know, without all of the other things you have within it, the, the signalling, the track, the way it... The, the systems that operate it. So this gallery will focus totally on that side of it as opposed to the rail vehicles. So that gives you an idea of the inside of uh, Central Hall. It's a highly sustainable uh, design that we've delivered through it with it. 
Um, there, there'll be no things like there'll be no air conditioning or similar. It will it'll all be done through uh, using the building to both heat and cool it from ground source heat pumps and then louv louvers to um, uh, cool it down. Uh, but it's also got low embodied uh, carbon within it. We could talk for probably an hour just about how that building's de been developed. Um, it's sort of a bit like, obviously, not as beautiful as this space. But the idea of what we're looking to do with this is to have this amazing space that people can come into, stand in it, and then think about what do they want to do today. Because they'll be able to see through to Great Hall, Central Hall, um, Wonder Lab, which I'll show you in a moment, all the different parts of the museum, futures, galleries, so they can really make an informed decision of what they want to do. But also, we know when people arrive into spaces, they like to have a moment just to stop and breathe, rather than, what do I do, need to do next? Where do I need to go? This is a large space to enable them to do that. And, you know, shockingly for a museum, we've not stuffed it full of objects, which is what people love to do in museums, is put loads of things in it. But actually, we're making the building sing itself rather than uh, the objects. We've got that in lots of other places. Um, Wonder Lab. So, uh, Wonder Lab is a, a, a space we are opening. It's the first part of Vision 2025. That will open in uh, May, June next year. Um, it's a hands on gallery. We say it's a children's gallery, but it, trust me, it's for adults as well. It really is. Um, it, it's, we've been working with the Royal Society of Engineering, um, we've also been working with uh, the rail sector. Birmingham University, uh, York University, Miles' team have been working with us as well, which is how we evolve using the engineer habits of mind, interactives that help young people to think like an engineer. How do you problem solve? How do you innovate um, through this gallery? Um, and uh, we'll have 25 various different interactives going from sort of quite small and intimate for maybe two or three people to think to one which is probably about the same size as this half of the hall, which is what lots of people can come together and try and problem solve together. Um, this is just to give you an idea of some of the um, uh, uh, hero images of what's happening within that space. There's everything from a, uh, an air wind tunnel, which you can stand in and get knocked over by, um, <coughs> which would be great fun. <laughs> It, we've, we're using what was our workshop space. We've, um, we've, met, we've got three new workshops being built across the museum which will help deliver what we need. This big dedicated space we didn't really use anymore for our own engineering. So we're turning that into Wonder Lab, but, Wonder Lab, but keeping the feel of an engineering workshop in it. We've got the, the crane is staying but is being painted into a different colour. The pits will stay but be glazed over. It's all the things to give that feel of a workshop. Um, this <coughs> particular interactive, as you can see in this side image, the uh, left-hand image, uh, you'll be able to see from there right the way through to Central Hall and the other way as well. So it goes through the cafe and the retail, but the idea being having a big picture window to really wow people to come, and there'll be another, another image I'll show you in a sec that shows how that will, you know, people can interact with it. We're also putting in a show space so that we, so our explainers, we have a, a team of explainers who um, work with our visitors to get them really excited about engineering and, and, and do vet. This, this is where they do um, a little bit of light peril, they call it, uh, which usually involves things blowing up. Um, but it's also an opportunity, importantly, uh, so it's because it'd be an open space within um, Wonder Lab. It's also an opportunity for corporate events, also for evening events. So we've, we're building it in a way so that it's flexible, both to be used as a gallery for school groups and uh, families, but also to have uh, another facility in York that can be used for um, corporate events. Um, so, for those of you who saw Aesthetica this year and saw uh, Steve Messam's uh, artwork, which was exploding out the front of the art gallery, we've commissioned him to do a, um, a, an art piece that will be in the centre of, uh, of Wonder Lab. You'll be able to see that from through that big window I just showed you. You'll be able to see that from Central Hall. And, and this is, it, it's, a, it's an awe-inspiring thing. It's massive. It goes, you know, it's taller than this building inside, which will be a way of just helping young people, to, you know, that sort of, how, how is that possible? How can that stand? How can that work? And you'll be able to walk through it. Um, and that's very exciting to see that when that's built in. 
Um, as you would expect, we have done a huge amount of prototyping because we haven't bought off the shelf. There's lots of off the shelf things like this. We've evolved and developed our own um, interactive. So we've worked with local charities, the Island Snappy Trust um, and other school groups to prototype basically giving them an opportunity to break it, see how it works, see how it doesn't work. So I think every interactive will have either three or four prototypes, which again is that the groups we're working with is to show them how you test and try things before getting to the right one you need. It's all part of the engineering process. Um, we're also developing our outdoor space, uh, South Yard. Uh, so for that, again, for those who know the, the, the back of the museum, it's, it's pretty redundant railway land at the moment. It's, it's quite an awful. I remember I once took, uh, for those of you who know Dame Mary, Dame Mary Archer, our uh, chair of the Science Museum group, I took her out into that space and she said, but we don't open this to the public, do we? Yes, we do open this to the public because it's a really bad space. So what we're looking at doing as part of this is evolving our South Yard outdoor space to have, to have a green space, but also with opportunity for play, but also opportunity to have uh, interactions with the collection, have a cup of tea, have a cup of coffee, whatever, whilst people are out there. Also, this will be completely permeable into York Central. And that's really important because we know there are large groups of people who don't think museums are for them. So this is our way of getting them by stealth. So they, they can come into South Yard without coming into the museum. Uh, they can engage with the collection. They can you know, have, have, have some fun out there. But importantly, we're not putting any toilets outside. We're putting them in the museum, which means they've got to come in if they want to be able to use the facilities. So it's to help them begin to see that actually museums are for everybody. When I was growing up, we never went to museums. They weren't something that our family thought were for us. And now I'm running one. You know, so it, it's, it's to get people to see that it, it is for them. Um, so just a, a few images. So we, again, we're using the inspiration of the railways, but nothing is a pastiche of the railways. It, it is, it's using that as an inspiration for it rather than... Uh, having you know, carriages or, or trains out there. Um, we're also taking inspiration from the, uh, the planting in the railways, you know, really important biodiversity around the country. How, you know, there's a lot of corridors um, around the country using the railways. So we're taking the inspiration from that in terms of how we're doing the planting. Also, we all know it doesn't need much looking after when it's by the side of the railway tracks because it all just grows. So again, we're looking at how we can keep it as uh, sustainable as possible. Um, as I mentioned, we are, um, I mentioned it already, which is we're, we're setting up our own workshops uh, so that one of the things that some of you may be aware of is that if you are on a heritage um, railway trip in, on the East Coast Main Line, most of the stabling is done at the museum, so they come and stay, uh, they keep their loco there, they coal and water it. Uh, or diesel, we will be maintaining those types of facilities so that we can still be bringing people to, to York, um, but just doing it in a slightly different way. As I mentioned before, uh, Museum Square. So this, this is the space that's at the front of the museum. All of that bit um, will be a fantastic opportunity really amazing opportunity for people who are uh, arriving into York at the station or coming through that beautifully named Marble Arch. Who ever thought that was a good idea under uh, the East Coast Main Line? Um, but it, it will be a really beautiful way that people will be able to see the, um, uh, the start of York Central. And that will be being involved with Station Square by the developer as they move forward. But the first phase of that will be delivered for 2025. Um, I just thought it was worth mentioning, um, for those of you who, who are anywhere near the museum, you might see there's quite a lot of it um, under scaffolding. Um, if we've got a roof, there'll be something wrong with it. No matter where they are, there is something wrong with every single building. So we've, we've as well as the sort of £60 million redevelopment, which is the transformational beautiful things, we're also investing in the estate as well, sorting the roofs and the boilers, the you know, boring things like that. Um, as well as doing a refresh of Station Hall. Um, I'm just going to show you a quick um, video now, which just sort of gives you a feel for Futures Gallery and a bit more on Wonder Lab. It's, it's only about 90 seconds long, so as soon as I click this, it should start, I'm assured.
that gives you an idea of the sort of the, 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 the excitement we're looking to build around Wonderlab and, and uh, Futures Gallery. Um, but we're also sorting out some of the other parts of the estate. So this is Station Hall, which we're looking to do a, a refresh of. To, it, it's probably, at the moment, the place where our visitors spend the least amount of time, unless they're at a dinner, because that's where we do all our dinners, or they're in the cafe. Um, so we're looking at just put, having far greater stories about the people and stations and the railways. So it's far more about the, the personal stories that people can relate to about it. Um, so, and that, will, that opens uh, towards the end of next year after we've replaced the roof on Station Hall because, as I say, we need to replace almost every uh, roof. Um, and that's what this is, um, the goods office, which is the main building you see at the moment. So work is underway to replace all the windows and the roof of this building. We've got another building called Timber Dock that's having a new roof put in on it at the moment. So, we, you know, we'll be improving the estate as we go. But what we've learnt from this is actually... We should be, we're going to have the next four years of being a hoarded building. Um, and it gives, gives us a really great opportunity to talk about what we're doing into the future. So this is just some internal hoarding that's for Wonderlab. Um, but we will be doing so much more to be able to tell people about what's happening in the museum, how they're going to get around the museum, because it's going to be challenging. Uh, we're going to have to close half of the museum next year for about 18 months, which is going to be challenging for us and for our visitors but using things like the hoarding and working with the York Central team and the communications they're doing around it to make sure we can keep both residents and uh, visitors informed of what we're doing and that's me done that was whistle stop tour hopefully that gives you a flavour